Hello bookworms, I'm Becca. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a huge book haul. Obviously I have been away for a little bit and by a little bit I mean four months and even though I've been taking a break from making videos and I've kind of still been in a reading slump, I've still been buying books. So I have four months worth of books to show you guys. We love to see that. Before I get started, I wanted to say that I have these books organized in a nice, orderly fashion, starting with middle grades and moving on to young adult. I had it separated by genre. I had it all worked out. And then, well, y'all see the thumbnail. I tried to take a thumbnail and disaster struck. So now the books are all jumbled. So bear with me, we're gonna be hopping all over the place and I apologize for that, I really do. But I'm also too lazy to change it, but that's for another day. That's just something to dive into for another day. Anyway, here are the books I've gotten in the last four months. The first book I have to show you is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. This is an adult fantasy by the author of The Night Circus, which I never read but heard incredible things about and always wanted to read, so I figured that I would give this one a try. This follows a character named Zachary Ezra Rollins. If that isn't a name, I don't know what is. And he stumbles upon this like hidden labyrinth collection filled with tunnels lined with stories and he gets transported into a story from his childhood which lead him to two other people, Mirabelle and Dorian. And so together, the three of them start exploring this area more and as they go a timeless story starts to unfold around them. It sounds like it's going to be so magical. Honestly, I might pick this one up sooner rather than later which is crazy to me because I'm not a fantasy reader but this book sounds like it's just going to be so lovely. The next book I have to show you, I'm very excited for it, and it is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aidan Thomas. Aidan Thomas is also the author of Cemetery Boys, which I'm slowly making my way through, and I'm enjoying it, but it's definitely taking me some time to get through. But this new book is a Peter Pan retelling, and it follows Wendy, who five years prior to this book, disappeared in the woods with her brothers and she returned having no memory of what happened to her but her brothers didn't return and now more children in her town are starting to disappear and the police are knocking at her door wanting answers so it sounds like it's going to be really interesting i love this twist on a classic tale i love the story of peter pan it's definitely a story that is near and dear to my heart so i cannot wait to see how this one plays out. The next book I have to show you guys is Dark and Deepest Red by Anna Marie McLemore and this is a retelling of the 12 dancing princesses. I think that that's the name of it but I'm not entirely sure. I don't know much about that story and I don't really know much about this book except it is a retelling and it takes place in two different timelines. One in summer 1518 when a strange sickness sweeps over France and women dance in the streets without stopping, some until they fall down dead. And then the other timeline is five centuries later when a pair of beautiful red shoes seal themselves to Rosella Oliva's feet, making her dance uncontrollably. And she runs into probably the only person who could have information about this curse, a meal whose family was blamed for the curse five centuries prior. So it sounds like it's going to be really interesting. You know me, I love a retelling and I just could not resist picking this one up. Speaking of retellings, let's just continue down that road, shall we, with Straight Until Morning, A Twisted Tale by Liz Braswell. This is the Disney collection Twisted Tales, but it is the Peter Pan retelling, and I just really wanted to get this one because, like I mentioned, I love Peter Pan so much. And the back of this says, what if Wendy first traveled to Neverland with Captain Hook? So I love that spin that we're going to get. I don't know anything about this book and I don't really want to so I'm not going to read the inside flap. Um, I'm a little nervous picking this one up I will say because I feel like this series of books compared to other books I read reads a little younger than I'm used to 
with simpler language than I'm used to reading. So we'll give it a try. I'm in it just for the retelling, honestly, and I think that this one was a perfect place to start. Next, I have another fantasy, and it is A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. This is the third book in the Curse So Dark and Lonely series that she is writing. I still haven't read the second one, but I saw that this third one was coming out, and I had to go ahead and pick it up. I loved the first one so ding ding much but I get really nervous when it comes to series because I get nervous that when I continue on with it that the second book won't live up to just the expectations that I have coming down from the first book but since I love the series so much I definitely do want to pick up the second book sometime soon and then of course jump in to this third one. So A Curse So Dark and Lonely is actually another retelling. A Curse So Dark and Lonely is a Beauty and the Beast retelling but I think that the first book is the only one that is a retelling. I'm not sure if the second one is some sort of fairy tale retelling, and I'm not sure if this one is either. So, we'll see. We'll see. If you've read the second one and the third one, let me know down below in the comments anything you think that I might need to know, if it's a retelling, if there's just anything that I might need to know, go ahead and let me know. I would love that. Next, I have another fantasy, but this time we are moving on to middle grade. Honestly, I cannot believe that I'm getting so many fantasy books these past few months, but it kind of makes sense because sometimes when I get in a deep enough slump, the only thing that pulls me out is a fantasy. So I was being drawn to all of these really interesting stories. Now I just need to freaking read them. But this one is The Wildwood, and it is by Colin Malloy with illustrations by Carson Ellis. And let me just say, this book is freaking stunning. I don't really remember that much about it because I did get it a few months ago, but it seems to be about a girl named Prue whose brother is abducted by a murder of crows and taken to the impassable wilderness, which is a dense tangled forest on the edge of Portland. No one's ever gone in or at least returned to tell of it. So Prue goes on a journey through the impassable wilderness in search of her brother so it sounds like it's going to be really interesting let me just say the illustrations are really really gorgeous like look at that cages and it looks like tree roots but it also kind of looks like hair so that's something and then a bunch of birds flying across the page one of the things I love about middle grade especially middle grade fantasy is when illustrations are included i'm a sucker for book illustrations so this one already has my heart next i have yet another fantasy but it has a different twist to it that i'm really excited about this one is called all the stars and teeth and it's by adeline grace and this follows a princess named amara who is set to take over the throne as high animancer which is the master of souls but when her demonstration to take heir of the throne goes awry she's forced to flee and ends up striking a bargain with a pirate named bastion where he will help her prove that she's fit to rule if she helps him reclaim his lost magic so it just sounds so cool i haven't heard of many fantasies that deal with like seafaring and pirates i definitely have not read a pirate book before so i'm really interested in this one i'm super excited the next book i have to show you has a very interesting cover which is what drew me to it it is called gabby a girl in pieces and it's by isabel quintero and there is nothing on the back i have no clue what this book is about but it did win the tomas rivera mexican american children's book award and the back just says for all the gorditas flaquitas and in-between girls trying to make their space in the world don't worry you got this i am so beyond excited for this it's a really short read so it shouldn't take that long it's an own voices book and yeah that's all i can really say about it but the cover is so cool looking very unique very 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 unique the next book i have to show you is an adult thriller and it is called the chill it's by scott carson it's blurbed by stephen king i don't know how i got talked into getting this book but i did and it takes place in upstate New York. I'm just gonna read it. Far upstate in New York's ancient forests, a drowned village lies beneath the dark waters of the Chilliwaukee Reservoir. 
Early in the 20th century, the town was destroyed for the greater good, bringing water to the millions living downstate. Or at least that's what the politicians from Manhattan insisted at the time. The local families settled there since before America's founding were forced from their land, but they didn't move far and some didn't move at all. Now, a century later, a dark prophecy looms and the time has come for it to be fulfilled. For some reason, this is giving me Ozarks vibes and I can't really put my finger on why, but I mean, we love a secret. We love, we love a secret. Anything to do with water is very spooky. So I'm really excited for this one. Next I have another book that I don't really know that much about but I got it because of the author and it is King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. So I know Case and Calendar from Felix Ever After which I absolutely adored and this is a middle grade book about a boy named King who is sure that his brother Khalid has turned into a dragonfly after he has passed away unexpectedly. So it's going to be a really moving story about grief and secrets it seems like. He comes to understand the beauty and redemption of learning to fly past the secrets that keep him from rising to his truest self. I love that. Oh my gosh and the cover is stunning. We love to see it. I'm so excited. Now I have a book that is definitely more up my alley and it is If These Wings Could Fly by Kyrie McCauley. This is a debut young adult contemporary. I don't know that much about it but I do know that it deals with domestic abuse so trigger warning for that. And also the rebellious forces of sisterhood and first love. So it seems like it's going to be a pretty intense read um those are the kind of books that I enjoy reading so I'm sure that I will be ripped apart and put back together again and it's gonna be a good time it's gonna be a good cry if nothing else it's gonna be a good cry next I have another young adult contemporary that I've already read but I still wanted to share because I really enjoyed it and it is Sasha Masha by Agnes Borinsky and this was a really interesting read. It was very short. Obviously I have some tabs there. I read it as part of the book club that I do over on my Twitch channel and in my Discord. Once a month chat chooses a book to read from my bookshelves and we read it and then talk about it on stream at the end of the month. So this was the book for March I believe and it follows a boy named Alex who is kind of like coming to terms with the fact that maybe his name isn't Alex at all, maybe his name is Sasha Masha. And so it's all about like gender exploration and coming to terms with different gender identities which was incredible and just so unique to read about. I loved that it was all of the beginning part of that like the majority of the book was Sasha Masha figuring himself out and figuring out what his feelings meant and realizing that he had been feeling this way his entire life and it was just so cool because he is surrounded by a lot of other queer people in his life and you got to see their different perspectives and their different journeys without them trying to force their journeys and their thoughts on Sasha Masha. So it was just so cool. It was just such a unique balance. It was a really fun character study and I highly recommend it. I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars just because I felt like some of the characters were a little two-dimensional and we all kind of agreed that we wanted a little bit more depth from some of the characters including Sasha Masha's journey so there is that. The next book I have to show you guys is Happily Ever Afters and it's by Elise Bryant. This is about a girl named Tessa who gets accepted into a writing program but once she gets accepted she realizes that all of her words are gone and so her friend suggests that she should go out and seek inspiration from her real life so she goes on a search to find her own Prince Charming to influence her writing and it sounds like it's going to be just a really sweet story of romance and maybe finding yourself, finding your voice, voice and we love to see that. The next book I have to show you guys I am so excited for and it is The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Bully. I don't really know much about this book except that it has indigenous representation which we love to see. This is the first book in my collection that has indigenous rep in it and is an own voices book. The author Angeline Bully is 
a part of the Ojibwe tribe in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which is my home state, and we love that. I just love that so much. I know all about the Ojibwe tribe, of course, and the Chippewa tribe, so this just really warmed my heart and I'm excited to read it. It is a young adult thriller, I believe, so that's going to be really interesting and I cannot wait to dive in. I've literally heard nothing but incredible things about this book, you guys. I'm so excited. The next book I have to show you guys is The Bitter Wine Oath by Hannah West. I don't really know much about this book either, except that it follows an 18-year-old named Nat who lives in a quaint Texas town that is being plagued by mysterious murder and they're not sure if supernatural forces are to blame or if it's a copycat killer or what's really going on but there are rumors of a sisterhood of wronged women that are trying to put a stop to everything that is going on and Nat thinks that these are just rumors until she finds out that the sisterhood is real and they're witches and they want her to join them and so Nat starts finding out more about her town's supernatural history and realizes that this coven of witches is doing a lot more than she thought to keep evil at bay in her small town. So it seems like it's going to be really dark and twisty, very cool, very witchy, and 100% right up my alley. The next book I have to show you guys is called The Bridge and it's by Bill Conningsberg and uh, he's also the author of The Music of What Happens. So uh, this book has huge trigger warnings for suicide as it focuses on two characters, Aaron and Tilly, who didn't know each other but meet each other when they both arrive at the George Washington Bridge at the same time intending to jump. And on the bridge there are four possibilities. Aaron jumps and Tilly doesn't. Tilly jumps and Aaron doesn't, they both jump or neither of them jumps. And so it seems like this book is going to explore what happens through all of those different possibilities. And that just sounds like a really interesting way to capture the story. Next I have The Project by Courtney Summers. And Courtney Summers is the author of Sadie, which is probably one of my favorite books of all time. It is 100% the book that has stuck with me long after I finished it, I still think about that ending like every day, every day. I don't even know if that is an exaggeration or not because that is how wild the ending of Sadie is. So when I saw that there was another book, I had to get it. I don't know anything about this book except that it has to do with cults. And you had me. You had me there. I feel like excited is an understatement and I cannot think of a word that fully captures what I'm feeling about reading this book because it's going to be so good. I just know it. It's going to be so good. Next I have a really heartwarming middle grade that is definitely going to make me cry and I'm ready for it. And it is Halfway to Harmony by Barbara O'Connor. This is about a boy named Walter who doesn't really know what to do with his life after his brother Tank got deployed and never came home. He meets a neighborhood girl named Posey and an eccentric man named Banjo. And what ensues is a summer full of taking chances, making friends, and learning who you are without the brother there that you always wanted to be. So, I, again, I don't know if Excited can fully capture my feelings towards wanting to read this book because it just seems like it's going to be so wonderful and I'm starting to feel like middle grade is such an underrated age range. I don't want to say genre because there's different genres within middle grade but I feel like middle grade is so slept on and I have loved every minute of going back as an adult and revisiting middle grade books and finding new favorites that I wish that I had growing up and I feel like this is going to be a new favorite. I can just feel it. We're down to the last five. We've almost made it. The next one I have is a young adult thriller and it is Those Who Pray by Jennifer Moffat and I believe that this one also has to do with cults. So I don't know why, I don't know. It's, it's been fantasies and cults. 
that is what this video has felt like and I don't understand why but I apparently love reading about a good cult so maybe I'll do a video reading all of my books that have to do with cults because I have others I have others is anyone surprised I'm not sure if anyone should be surprised at this point. The next book I have is one that I never would have picked up, but somehow I was talked into getting it, just like The Chill. I'm not sure how those two books came to be in my collection, but here we are. And it is The Lake by Natasha Preston. This is about girls Esme and Kayla, who used to be campers at Camp Pine Lake, and now they're back as counselors. And they're so excited to be back as counselors, but they can't stop thinking about before when they were campers and did something terrible and never told anyone but the lake never forgets what what this sounds insane insanely creepy really weird super out there i i don't know if i ever would have picked this one up but when it was being described to me i was like Hello? Why have I not read this already? So I'm not sure if I'm going to enjoy it. I'm definitely going to give it a try because they got me. They pulled me in hook, line, and sinker, and here we are. So we might as well read it, right? If things look a little bit different, it's because I have so many books that I filled up my entire SD card and I had to dump everything off, and now I'm back. So here we are. We only have a couple more books left, so let's do it. The next book I'm going to show you guys is really cool, and it is A Peculiar Apparel. That is my hair. That is disgusting. It's still there. Okay, we're fine. A Peculiar Apparel by Jeff Vandermeer. This is a young adult fantasy, and it is a massive book. I don't really know much about what this book is about, but I'm just going to read the back because it is insane sounding. Warning, this book is not normal. Charlemagne appears as a giant moth. Napoleon is just a head. William the Conqueror is an eel. Some of the vegetables you meet can talk. Marmots are not the usual size. There's a land bridge between England and Europe in an old earth called Aurora. Guns shoot bears. That's right, they shoot out bears. Rabid chipmunks fall from the sky and there are three magical doors, but no one knows what the doors really do or where the third door goes. Heck, all Jonathan Lambsheed knows is that he must help find a golden sphere before Aleister Crowley can, but nobody tells him the sphere is intelligent and a psychopath to boot. If you proceed, you must repeat the following. I have been warned, and the risk is mine. Long live Squishy. Sorry? What? Who is Squishy? You'll just have to read to find out. I... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. The next book I want to show you guys is one of my most anticipated books of the year, and it is Star World by Audrey Colthurst and Paula Garner. This is about two girls, Sam Jones and Zoe Miller, who are on opposite ends of the social spectrum, but I have one thing in common, they both want to escape reality. Sam is an artistic loner that flies under the radar at school and tries her best to manage her mom's obsessive compulsive disorder, whereas... Zoe is bubbly and happy on the outside, but on the inside, she is struggling with a lot of trauma from uh, being adopted and abandoned as an infant and also her family's decision to put her disabled younger brother in a residential care facility. While working on props for a school play, Zoe is drawn to Sam's paintings and has to borrow some, which results in an exchange of text messages and Star World is formed, which is a place where both of the girls can escape reality and have inside jokes and funny stories and really be an authentic version of themselves. But Sam starts to realize that her feelings for Zoe are more than friends and she's worried that admitting this to Zoe and herself is going to result in the end of everything that she holds dear. So this definitely sounds like it's going to be a very heavy book. I love Audrey Colther so much. I love her writing and 
I just feel like this is going to be a really unique story. It has an element of theater, which is something that I'm always drawn to, and I think that it's going to be a really good read. And the last book that I have to haul, I still wanted to include, even though I made a video kind of unboxing this book, but I just wanted to show it really quick, and it is S by J.J. Abrams and Doug Dorst. So this book I saw all over TikTok, and I made a video kind of unboxing it and telling how it came to be and telling more about the book. But basically it is a book with two readers, A World of Mystery, Menace, and Desire. And it is from like dual perspectives, but the story is being told in the margins of this book. So the two characters are Jennifer and Eric. And they both find themselves in a point in their lives where they're making crucial decisions. So they stumbled upon this book and the book is told through margin notes, which is really unique. And there's a bunch of like little letters and loose leaf things all throughout the book that add to the experience. I think that this is going to be an insanely interesting read. It's probably going to be more for the experience than anything. But I'm really excited to finally have it because I kept seeing it all over TikTok and I could not figure out how to get my hands on it. Luckily, one of my friends was able to send me the link and Josh ordered it for me and I'm so jazzed to have it as part of my collection. But if you want to see a little bit more of me unboxing it and diving deeper into what this book is about and showing off some more of the inside and what is going on in there, make sure you head on over to that video that I posted last week so you can check that out. And there you guys go. Those are all the books that I have purchased for myself over the past few months. Let me know down below in the comments if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. If maybe you're looking at some of these books and you're interested in hearing my thoughts let me know that too i am so excited to be getting back into making more videos but if you want even more content make sure you head over to my twitch channel twitch.tv slash becca with a book the links are down below in the description we talk about books we play games and we just have a really fun time and make sure to hop in the discord as well where we talk about games books life anything that you can really think of and it is just wholesome chaos over there. I hope to see you guys in some of those other spaces but that's all I got for you guys here today and I will see you next time. Bye!